Hey guys, TJ here and welcome back to finally another video. What you see here is the village of Meerstone, a small mining settlement in the northern midlands. While the main town has already been finished, there is still a lot to do around this settlement. The mines and village may need an update, but more importantly we still need to add some farmlands and forests, as well as build a castle looking over the village. The latter of which we are going to do in today's episode. Before we start, if you do enjoy today's video then please consider leaving a like on the video and subscribing to the channel. If we could reach 100 likes on this video it would make me very happy. Also the download for this castle that I'll be building in today's episode will be available for Highland patrons on my Patreon. Link in the description. Anyway, let's get to building. So we are going to start off today's episode with the planning. I wanted this keep to look more like a fortress than an actual palace. This meant that I had to plan this structure out very carefully. We are going to have one main gatehouse at the front side of the hill leading into the first courtyard. After that you will have to go through another gate in order to enter the main keep, which was going to be at the back side of the complex. With our most important part of the episode finished, it was time to start building the quite long pathway leading up the hill all the way to the castle. Along this road I was going to add several notable details to make it look less boring and more lively, like a smaller gate, a bridge as well as a large watchtower. Now that the pathway is done we can start with the fortress itself. It took me quite a while to finish up the gatehouse since I had to figure out what style I was exactly going to use. At the end of the day I decided to go for a very rocky basic block palette consisting of stone, stone bricks, andesite and other grey blocks with some spruce wood details mixed into it. In my opinion this created the best image that I had of the structure beforehand. The castle, which is called Norpeak, and the village of Meerstone are ruled by House Meradia, a house founded by migrants from another continent called the North, which as you may already expect is situated north of Phytor. Next up it was time for the second gate, leading to the main area of the keep. Just as in the village, I would give some of the towers a black and grey terracotta roof. To be honest, I was struggling a lot with the gate itself. I wanted to do something similar as what I did with the castle of Chamber Hill, which you see on this image, but on a smaller scale. After building for over an hour on this gate, I finally came up with a suitable design. Yeah, the two weeks off I took didn't do any good to my building at all. When the people of Moradia, which were then still known by their northern tribe name Mer Adja, reached the Midlands they were stopped by the city guard of Stormfast, which stood under command of the Great House Ashworth. Instead of antagonizing the tribesmen, Ashworth chose to help the Mer Adja and give them dominion over the regions that House Moradia still rules to this day. The Wolf's Hill, which is named after the rare mountain wolves that live in the area. In return, House Moradia swore loyalty to House Ashworth and protects the northern and eastern approaches to Stormfast. So for the main keep I was going for a Romanesque revival inspired architecture, just like I did with the castles of Starhold and Bloodstone. Within this main keep you will find a meeting hall slash throne room, lord's chambers, the council of the region as well as the dining hall. As I said before, my goal was to make the structure look like a combination between a fortress and an actual castle. And so far I think it's going quite well. At the back side of the castle I decided to add some kind of giant protrusion acting as a balcony to break up the empty wall. Before moving to Phytor, the Mer Adja were an infamous tribe in the north because of their Polderia, also known as Bear Riders. At its peak the tribe possessed a total of 200 snow bears. Sadly though the beasts were not fit for the warmer climates of Phytor, meaning the amount of snow bears House Moradia possessed during that time in Phytor plummeted quickly. 
till there were none left. There are still some empty enclosures situated within the dungeons of the keep, but that is something for you to explore. The last part of the exterior we still had to do is the largest tower of the structure, situated behind the main keep. From this main tower House Moradia can look over the entire valley. If an enemy would approach the region the guards can quickly mobilize. Now that the last tower is finished there was only one thing left to do in today's video. The interior. Normally I do not include the interior in my building episodes, however in this episode I have decided to include it because a lot of people have been requesting me to show some of the interiors I built. Although I won't be showing all of the interior because I still want some parts of the keep to be explorable for you. If you did enjoy today's speed build then please consider leaving a like on the video and subscribing to the channel. Also if you want to explore this castle yourself the download file for this keep as well as some of my other builds are available on my Patreon for High Lord Patrons. For those of you that were still wondering when the next survival episode is going to come out I am currently working on it. So I hope to release episode 5 as soon as possible. Anyway have a very nice day and see you next time. Bye bye.